Well, I've received a lot of questions over the past few weeks as I have worked to build the channel and we're here to answer some of those today. My name is Brittany Page. This is The Page Perspective. Thank you so much for being here. We are so close to 20,000 subscribers. Please help me get there by clicking subscribe. I so appreciate all of the likes, the comments, the emails, the voicemails, all of it has been so amazing. I so appreciate your support and I wanna to get to some of your questions now. So let's do it. The first one is from Holly Landis. Holly says, I want to know how you were able to overcome the influence your parents had on you so I can educate my grandchildren our hope for the future. Tracy Quinton says, your escape from your parents' beliefs. So this was probably the most common question that I have received since starting the YouTube channel. And that is because my background for those who may be watching this video, just getting to know me, this is the first time you've seen my face. I was raised in a white supremacist household. My parents moved us from Southern California to Idaho to be closer to Aryan nations when I was a kid. So that's primarily what people are asking about is like, how did you escape that? And I recently did a long form discussion with my friend Aaron Rabinowitz who hosts the Embrace the Void podcast. And like I said, we talked for about an hour about my upbringing and, and how I was able to escape. In lieu of playing that hour long conversation for you right now, I will just say that primarily what happened is luck. And if you're going to be on this journey with me for any period of time, at some point you're gonna hear me talk about how I do not like self-help gurus. <laughs> I don't like people who talk about how you should pick yourself up by your bootstraps, how you can, you know, do exactly what someone else did. If, if only I give you the, the blueprint, then you can follow it and you can do exactly what I did. Life is far more complicated than that. And a lot of it comes down to luck. And I was lucky enough to start to realize that my parents did not have my best interest in mind. And also to encounter compassionate adults like teachers who really took the time to understand where I was coming from and encourage me to be different and encourage me to learn the realities of the world. And, you know, luckily I found my way to college and I loved education and I continued my education. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's a lot, but a lot of it is luck. And when people hear me talk about luck, sometimes they think, well, that's not very specific. That's not something we can recreate. Luck is out of your control. And I hear you on that, but what my friend Aaron Rabinowitz would say to that, who studies luck, is obsessed with luck, is that we can actually create moments of luck for people. So like we can be that teacher that stepped in for me to help and, and educate me. We can be the people who are creating moments of luck for other people by being compassionate, by doing the right thing. So when you hear me talk about luck, hopefully you don't hear a hopeless message. Hopefully you hear one of hope. And if you wanna hear more about how I escaped my upbringing, I would, I would definitely suggest going and listen, listening to that podcast. Thank you for those questions. Next is David Smith. I just discovered your channel and like your videos. I hadn't thought how MAGA is causing a surge in white supremacist groups. I would be interested in your thoughts about if Trump engaging with racists like Nick Fuentes energizes or has any real effect on white supremacy. Uh, David, yes, I would say absolutely. It, it legitimizes the white power movement to have Trump eating dinner with Nick Fuentes on Thanksgiving. I often talk about how much more difficult it would have been for me to escape my white supremacist upbringing if I had been growing up today rather than in the 90s. Because, you know, when my parents were showing up at my school demanding that I sit out on history lessons in fourth grade and I was the only one in the hallway, if that was happening now, I wouldn't be the only one in the hallway. I would be out there with other kids who have right-wing radical parents that don't want them learning about the realities of the world, that want to ban books in libraries and everything that we're seeing in the news. It would just be that much harder for me to have escaped. And I'm 
very worried about kids, in fact, who are growing up in some similar circumstances that I did. But if you don't want to take it from me that it legitimizes the white power movement to have Donald Trump hosting Nick Fuentes for dinner, you can take it from historian Kathleen Ballou, who is an associate professor of history at Northwestern University. And she has spent years researching and, and writing about white power movements. And in a recent interview with Greg Sargent at the Washington Post, she talks specifically about the ways that that dinner with Nick Fuentes functioned as a propaganda victory, saying, quote, what happened during the Trump years is that he and his administration opened some space for people to use mainstream politics for extremist purposes. A former president sitting for a dinner meeting with a white power activist is the kind of thing that activists can use to claim that they have become a real political force. We have to read that alongside things like January 6th and the Pelosi attack on Paul Pelosi, husband of the House Speaker. White power activists can use both of these events to say that the political mainstream can be infiltrated and radicalized. They think that a white public can be awakened to the dangers of racial extinction. And add to that, by the way, the general refusal of leaders in the Republican Party to specifically come out and say, no, we will not support Donald Trump for president because he is meeting with white supremacists. Would have been that easy, but apparently not. So thank you for your question, David. Appreciate that one. This one is from Scott. Scott Gilbertson says, I'd like to see you expand a little more on a comment I heard you say that you like the dentist. <laughs> I'm 65 and have never heard that before. Well, Scott, it is strange. I, you're not the first person to tell me that that is strange, and I hear you on that. I don't know quite how to make sense of it. I think growing up poor, I, I had little supervision and I ate a lot of sugar. And so this created a situation where I had a lot of cavities and I did have some terrible dental experiences. However, I think going to the dentist and getting a free toothbrush and little thing of toothpaste was like a, a little gift, a little reward for me as a poor kid, and it was exciting to get the little package of gifts. It was like positive reinforcement for me. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's why I love the dentist. I, I love to clean too. So I come out of there feeling super clean, super good. Maybe that's part of it. I don't know. Help me figure it out, Scott. What, what is it? <laughs> Thank you for your question. Next is Nick Lindsay. Maybe why you still use CNN for clips. Not throwing shade, just wondering because they are the same as Fox News. Well, Nick, I don't agree with that. I don't think they're the same as Fox News. I know that there is some controversy because the new chief executive, Chris Licht, is reportedly making these staffing changes, removing people because he wants CNN to be more centrist, more moderate. Now, he has denied those reports, but it's it's hard to read him removing prominent critics of Donald Trump in any other way that he, you know, of course, wants it to be more centrist and moderate from my view. But there are good people who work at CNN that are doing great work. I love Mata Raju. I love Anderson Cooper. I love Jake Tapper. I mean, there's there's a lot of people there that I appreciate and I think do good work. Behind the scenes, if you're asking like how I choose clips for I Doubt It podcast, I typically go to several different news sources and I'll listen to the same story through several different news sources. I like PBS, CBS, NBC, and CNN is typically pretty good on YouTube as well. And sometimes I listen to the same story through all those different news outlets and I determine who I feel has the most accurate take and then I use that clip. Not everyone has time to do this, so I think a shorthand for this is to find people that you trust, that you feel like are doing good work, and whether those are people that you follow on YouTube or follow on Twitter, and then you kind of understand who they trust for information, that's kind of the shorthand of doing it rather than going to all these different sources. So. I don't agree, Nick, that CNN is the same as Fox News. I am cautious, though. I understand where you're headed with that. I think it's important to suss it out, any resource that you're using, and ensure that it is accurate as possible. 
So thank you for that question, Nick. And hopefully I <laughs> don't have to make any corrections anytime soon. This one is from Adna Loy. Adna says, I would love to see you talk about progressives that are up and coming, not the liberals, but the real and actual progressives. Well, here's a few that got elected this round. Delia Ramirez in Illinois, Becca Ballant in Vermont, Greg Kazar in Texas, Jasmine Crockett also in Texas, Jonathan Jackson in Illinois, Val Hoyle in Oregon, and Summer Lee in Pennsylvania, and then we cannot forget Maxwell Frost in Florida. Maxwell Frost is the first member of Gen Z to be elected to Congress. Recently made headlines because he actually tweeted about losing an apartment that he wanted to rent here in DC because of his bad credit. And we featured him on I Doubt It podcast in our Taking Care of Biz segment, which is where we highlight someone who is you know, taking care of biz and <laughs> doing good work. And how wonderful to have someone in Congress who is being transparent about the fact that they were denied an apartment because they have bad credit, like millions of Americans. Finally, someone in Congress who is going to be able to stand up for Americans who are in that same situation, struggling with poor credit, struggling with finances. So Maxwell Frost is definitely one to watch. I think we're going to wrap it up there. I appreciate these questions. These were all fantastic. I have a few more, but I think we're, we're going a little long here. I plan to make this a regular thing, like I said. So if you have questions, please leave them in the comments below, or you can call 657-464-7609. You can also email us at idoubtit at dollamore.com. If you're looking for ways to support us here, liking, subscribing, commenting, all of those things that help the algorithm that feed the algorithm, but you can also support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. If you have topic suggestions, by the way, for things that you would like to see me do videos on, I am always accepting those. So be sure to leave those for me in the comments as well. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for these awesome questions and I will see you next time.